We are back talking about major updates to the MCAT. If you are a pre-med student and you were thinking about applying this year, you were thinking about taking the MCAT this year, you need to watch this video. I'm gonna break it down, let's go. But stop making excuses, stop whining, stop, right? Get at it. No excuses, just dominate. All right guys, like I said, I'm Dr. Andre Pine today. I'm the study doc and I'm here to give you guys trustworthy, actual advice to get you where? To medical school. That's where you want to go. You a pre-med, baby. Got to get to medical school. I myself went to Stanford Med School, the best medical school in the country. I'm completely biased, but it's true. Today, we're talking about the major announcements that AABC just made a couple days ago. If you guys didn't catch my first part of this, this is a multi-part series because I think it's important to dissect each of these elements so we don't get confused, we don't get overwhelmed, and we don't muddle the things together, right? We, we tackle them separately so that we can act. And more importantly than knowing what is happening with WMSA and what's happening with MCAT is also understanding what you need to do after the change. So if they make a change, okay, there's a change. But what do you do? What does it change for you? And how do you protect your MCAT score? So last time we talked about the length of the MCAT shortening. And if you want to hear all about that, click below in the description. I got a link to that video. Today we're talking about the other set of changes, which I kind of lumped together because they are kind of similar in that... The AAMC is trying to create more test dates and more testing options to allow more students to test this summer to allow the application cycle to stay somewhat preserved. Here are the changes. The first is, instead of offering one MCAT a day, <laughs> they're gonna be offering three MCAT sittings a day. 6.30, noonish, and then 6 p.m. So three sittings a day, as opposed to the normal setup. To accomplish this, they're shortening the length of the MCAT, but they're going to be three testings every single day. Additionally, they've added three new test dates, one in June, two in September. For these new test dates, you can't enroll, you can't register for these test dates until May 7th. They've also announced through the end of 2020, there will be no schedule change fees, no cancellation fees, so you guys can sign up for times, and if you have to cancel, if they have to cancel, it will all be fixed it'll be okay you won't be out that money which is great because there's a lot of uncertainty right now for some of you guys right who's battling that uncertainty like i feel like the mcat is hard enough but now it's like oh i'm battling uncertainty i'm battling the mcat and with that uncertainty i want to procrastinate i don't know what's happening and it becomes this overwhelming stress so as we talk about changes and we talk about this application cycle of 2020 the first thing i have to say to you guys forget all the changes keep yourself centered keep yourself focused recognize you can't control what may come. All you can control is the factors that are in your control and that's you being prepared for whatever may come. With these changes, with adding more test dates, some of you, we have to budget or bucket our students into different buckets based on situations to give adequate advice. Will we agree? We're gonna split our buckets into two separate groups. If you are not planning on applying this cycle, this is you first. And then we're gonna get to the people who are gonna be applying this cycle. But if you are a pre-med, you were thinking about taking the MCAT this year in 2020 and you're not applying this cycle where you submit your application in the summer of 2020 and then you matriculate 2021, this is for you. People are confused. Should I take the test this year when it's shortened, when it's altered, when there's a lot going on or should I wait till next year? And that entirely depends on whether you are prepared. Don't make your decision based on the length of the MCAT. Meaning if you're like, oh, wait a minute, it's a shorter test, which means I have to I don't have to focus as long, it's not gonna be as, as draining of a day, I'll score better, or you're thinking, oh, the curve might be better. If you're not prepared, that curve doesn't matter. You gotta be prepared. So if you've been studying and you feel ready to take the test this summer, by all means, sign up. But if you aren't under the pressure of having to get an application submitted early in this upcoming cycle, it may be in your best interest to push your MCAT test date, test date back to September or even January, giving yourself full amount of time to study full amount of time for this COVID stuff to work itself out and not have that extra stress on your studying. And then you can take your test in September or in January and still have all that extra time to get your application together. Does that make sense to everybody? So if you're not applying this cycle, I would actually just kind of sit back, get your study together, wait September or even January when it goes back to normal version and take your test. That would be my advice to you. 
And as part of that, we're gonna talk about later in this video are things you can do to protect yourself from COVID during this MCAT and with your testing. So hold on for that. But part of that has to do with that protecting yourself from COVID. The second group of students are the group of students who are applying this cycle. So if you are applying this cycle, you are up against a deadline. And you might've seen my previous video about medical schools likely to provide a grace period for applications to roll in. We've already seen that AMCAS has pushed back their transmission date, which means the date they, they send their first batch of applications out to medical schools back two weeks to, again, grace period the cycle a little bit. Individual medical schools may be doing so also with the MCAT depending on what happens. So if you're planning on applying this cycle, what should you do? Should you schedule one of these new dates? Should you have a date scheduled in summer or should you wait till things shake out? It would be my advice to you understanding that with applications, the earlier you apply, the better chance you have of getting in, right? You don't have to apply with the first batch, but you should be applying in June, July, and this year I'll even throw in August. Your application should be complete and ready to go to medical schools in June, July, and maybe even August this year. So in order to accomplish that, you need to take your MCAT in June or July. Does this make sense to everybody? <laughs> you gotta take your test in June or July. And the AAMC also announced they're going to expedite grading of MCATs taken before August 1st down to two weeks instead of the normal four week processing, which gives you a little bit of leeway to take those late July uh, MCAT dates. But I still wanna advise you guys, take the MCAT early, get a test date and go in there and rock it. And as part of that process, right? I mentioned people who aren't applying, go ahead and pull back, take the test later. If you're applying this cycle, and you're thinking, oh, you know what? I've been practicing and I've been getting 485, but on test day, I'm gonna magically get 515. It's not going to happen for you guys, right? You are who you are. So if you are not scoring where you wanna score, don't click your heels together and magically think you're gonna score amazingly <laughs> on test day. So only go in and take this MCAT if you're fully prepared. And the AAMC has helped you guys out because they're telling you we're waiving change fees. So if you get up a couple weeks before your test date and you're like, man, I'm not scoring where I wanna score, pump the brakes, change your test date, push it back, and even consider pushing your application back. Because we have to remember, when we're applying to medical school, there are no participation awards. You don't get credit. No one can say, oh yeah, on your resume. I applied to medical school once. No, you're either in the medical school, you're either a doctor or you're not. So it's, you don't get a reward for just applying. You have to apply competitively and apply right to get in. So it's okay to delay your application a year if you have to. So this makes sense to everybody, two buckets. If you're not applying this year, I would kind of wait September or January test date. If you're applying this cycle, make sure you sign up for an early test date and take advantage of this to be able to be in this application cycle. Overall, there are three things you need to do to prepare yourself and to protect your MCAT score with these changes. The very first thing, guys, is if you have a test date scheduled, it is imperative that you prepare like it's going to happen that day. I'm getting so many emails, so many voicemails, so many messages from students telling me they are struggling to find the motivation. They are struggling with procrastination. They are struggling to lift what seems like an insurmountable burden from all the uncertainty of when their test date will be. If you want to have your mindset right, if you want to have your preparation right, you need to focus in and say, no, this test will happen this day. And just think about it that way. When something changes, you can always adjust. But if you think about it that way, you're going to put in the preparation to be ready in case it happens. Because the worst case scenario is the test date actually does happen. It opens up and you could possibly have applied the cycle, but you aren't ready because you've been slacking off concerned about uncertainty around your test date. The second thing I want you guys to do is to understand this test is now offered multiple different times a day. And some of you might be saying, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Not necessarily, because maybe you're not a morning person and the 8 a.m. test slot wasn't going to be great for you. Now you can schedule a noon test date. Now you can schedule a six test time, right? So you have more flexibility to say, what time of day do I function best? What time of day do I wanna take this exam? Additionally, you can adjust your preparation for that test time. So if there's a preferred time and you get that time, then you can start shifting all your practice tests into that window. If you get a time that you're not ideal at, you struggle to focus that time of day, you can build focus, you can change your body's rhythms by taking lots of practice tests in that window and straining yourself and stressing yourself to acclimate, to be ready for that time slot. So I want you guys to change 
your practice test timing so we can best simulate the day of the test. The third thing I want you guys to do with your preparation, make sure you guys are ready. I have told my students over and over again, I don't think there's going to be MCAT test center testing in May and, there, and May got canceled. I, for, I foresaw that. And right now, I want you to put in the books. I may be completely wrong, but I don't believe they're gonna put you guys in test centers in June. That's just my opinion, because I don't think they should do that. I think when we talk about coronavirus spread and COVID, whether you believe it's a hoax or not, basic pathology, transmission, right, viral rules, why would you put a lot of people, right, lots of people, so lots of sources, in a tiny confined area with lots of touch points? You have to go to the front desk. You have to fingerprint in. You have to sit at a desk. Everyone use the keyboard, the mouse, breathing all the same air. I feel like that's a breeding ground for the spread of infection. That being said, they may force you guys to go to a test center. If they do, we wanna make sure that we're prepared, that we can protect ourselves and still be effective on the test. So what I want you guys to do is get in the habit, not every time you study, but when you go to take full length practice tests, I want you to get in the habit of wearing an N95 mask. Why? Because you may choose or you may be told you have to by the test administrators, you have to wear an N95 mask. If you've never, if you've never worn one, they are very thick. Okay, so it can be very claustrophobic. It can be very hard to breathe. You might start freaking out. So we wanna get used to that and take out that variable as something that's gonna throw you off on test day. So I want you guys to get used to testing either, either in a mask of some sort or in an N95 to get used to having something on your face and it not throw you off on test day. I would also advise you guys on your MCAT test day to take your own hygiene stuff. Bring your own Lysol wipes, your own alcohol spray, whatever you wanna to do to make sure if they don't have the stuff there to protect you, you're gonna protect yourself. You're gonna wipe down your own keyboard, wipe down your own mouse. You're gonna be practicing good hand washing, right? Hand sanitation, right? We're gonna be sterilizing and using our alcohol on our hands. Protect yourself. And if you have a mask, wear your mask, even if they don't provide one for you. Does that make sense to everybody? So I just want you guys to understand, these are some changes we can adjust to them, but we have to understand what is our plan, what is our time, what is our, what is our right? And as I continually say to you guys, the number one mistake students make with the MCAT and also with applying is they rush it. They say, you know what, I gotta, I gotta, they put this artificial pressure saying this has to be the year. It doesn't have to be, guys, because all you're in a rush to do is get rejected. We want to take our time, have it be our year where we're going to be accepted because that's what matters. So don't feel that pressure. It's okay. And if some of you guys feel that pressure, I want you to reach out to me. I want you to comment in the box below because actually, you know what, better yet, don't reach out to me. Comment in the box below because there are so many students out here who don't understand. They think they're alone in feeling that pressure. They, they, you know, so I want you guys to comment in the box below if you're feeling that kind of pressure. I want you to comment in the box below if maybe last cycle or maybe a couple months ago, you rushed your MCAT, you rushed your application and you had a bad outcome. I want you to share that also so students can see there are consequences to rushing when you know you're not ready. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll be back. I'll be back, okay? On Wednesday, you're going to see a video from me breaking down what you need to do to be effective with your full length practice tests given the shortened length of the MCAT. So I want you guys to come back Wednesday. We're gonna have another video for you guys breaking down what should be your full length strategy given the fact that the test is shortened and the question compilation or composition, excuse me, is different. What do you need to do? We're gonna talk about that. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Like I said, I'm Dr. Andre Pineset. Check out my website, studenttransformation.com. All kind of great, amazing things for you. And check out the box below where I have a free three hour MCAT webinar just for you guys. Thank you so much. How do we always end? No excuses, just dominate. See you guys next time. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses, no more complaining. You're going to take your future into your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. Get to my website, studenttransformation.com. I challenge you, what are you going to do today to make your life better?